Oh, there we go. Man, what a nice bass. God, he, he just destroyed that sexy dog, Junior. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Man, you know they're eating it when they get that front hook in their mouth just like that. YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Guys, today we're going to talk about some topwater fishing. And not just any topwater fishing. We're going to break down a bait, a particular bait size that you need to be throwing right now and probably for the next month and a half or so. You know, I get a lot of questions about topwater fishing. It's not using forward-facing sonar. This is actual old school trying to go catch some bass this time of year when it's hot, when it's not easy to do. And guys, we're going to break it down today. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do, what you need to have, and everything that is going to make you successful. But real fast, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do so. Just in that bottom right-hand corner of the screen, just hit that sub button. Make sure you click that bell so you can get notified every time I post a new video. So let's break it down real quick. We got all kinds of topwaters. You know, you got popping style baits, you got walking style baits. But one thing that has always been super consistent for me, especially this time of year, is a walking bait, you know, like a sexy dog. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make is they the very first one they reach for is the full size. Now, don't get me wrong. I love throwing a full size sexy dog. I love catching fish on it. And it is probably one of the most consistent fish catchers in my boat. However, there's about a two month window here, month and a half, two month window, when that normal size sexy dog is not the one you need to be throwing. You actually need to downsize a little bit. And here we have the sexy dog junior. This is a smaller size. And quite honestly, this time of year, that smaller size for this next two months, the smaller size is the one you should turn to. Now, you know, there's a lot of different variations. You've got a Super Spook Junior. You've got, this is a, a Tekel. Uh, it's a three hook version, but it's the exact same length, about three and a half to four inches long. Um, honestly, I just throw the Sexy Dog Junior. I have a bunch of them and it works. I catch them. And I get a lot of questions. Probably one of the number one questions is, man, why do you throw a topwater with only two hooks, whereas this Tekel has three hooks? Well, the, the deal is I can put an oversized treble on the front and the back. Yeah, I can put a number four, even in some cases a number three on the front and a number uh, four on the back. But honestly, it's no different than throwing just a popper and style bait like a KVD Splash that only has two hooks as well. So to me, my hookup ratio is just as good on the two hook version because it's smaller. You know, they are able to hone in on it a little bit better. You know, one thing that the fish have uh, that deal with this time of year is anytime you fish oversized lures, they kind of shy away from them. And I think it is a combination of the heat. Uh, they've seen a lot of baits. And quite honestly, they want something that's an easier meal. That big meal is not necessarily easier in the months of August, September, uh, and leading into October. Now October, that's when I do go to the oversized baits. I'll go to the, you know, the sexy dog, even the mega dog, the really big top water, big swim baits, uh, like the Chad Shad, things like that. But these next couple months, I go to that smaller size. Now when it comes to color, I keep my colors fairly basic. You know, on this particular bait, I either throw a, a ghost, like a ghost minnow, something like that. I throw the, the regular bone. I throw chromes, any kind of chrome sexy shad. Uh, this is uh, the shizzle, which is a new color by Strike King. It's one I throw quite a bit. I actually had to cut it off. Uh, it's one that whenever I'm chasing schooling bass, something like that, it's definitely one I have tied on. You really got to pay attention to your watercolor, though. The more stained it is, the more you want to go with either a chrome or just the bone color. As the water clears or the area that you're fishing, the water's a little bit cleaner. That's when I'm going to chromes or even more of a transparent color like the ghost minnow or something like that. But when it comes to equipment, equipment can be really, really important when it comes to uh, fishing, especially the smaller size Sexy Dog Junior. I actually fish it on the exact same setup that I would throw uh, my KVD splash on or smaller topwaters or square bills. And that's actually the loose custom speed stick. It's just a square bill crankbait rod. This is the old model. Uh, you can get the new model, the, the custom speed stick, and it comes in a square bill rod. It's a 
It's a medium heavy, but it's a mod fast. So it has a little bit slower tip. It is literally the most perfect rod I've ever found for throwing a top water on. Uh, and, and honestly, it's still a great like 1.0, 1.5 rod as well, roll casting around docks and things like that. But as far as getting distance and things like that, it is easily the, the best rod I've found. Uh, I don't go overkill on my reels. Like I said, this is an old hyper mag. I've had this reel for probably five years now, four years, whatever it's been. Um, and it's just my consistent top water reel. We always have those particular rods and reels that we just have that much confidence in. This is one of those setups. And I know eventually it's all gonna break and things are gonna go bad. Uh, but as of right now, everything's still working perfectly. Uh, now this is 30 pound uh, Strike King Contra uh, braid. This is what I throw my top water on always is 30 pound braid. Uh, I don't care what top water it is. That is what I'm throwing. Uh, now, the one difference that you're going to notice on here, unlike uh, some others, is I actually put a 17-pound Strike King Contra Mono leader. You know, this is only about a 5 to 6-inch leader. I do that for a couple of different reasons. Reason number one is it gives, it, it keeps the hook from hooking the line. You know, if I'm using uh, as, as any type of treble hook top water, whether it be a a prop bait, a popper, a walking bait, and you're sitting there twitching it, your bait's going to be walking back and forth in some cases or, or jumping or doing these kind of things, and that hook will catch that line. Well, if it's braided line, it will not unhook itself. You just got to reel it in, fix it, and make another cast. With mono, even the, the line is so stiff, even if it tries to hook it, a lot of times I can get it to come undone before I even get the bait in. Uh, but with the line being so stiff, I don't have to deal with that as much. So I just tie a simple Alberto knot right here, line to line knot. It's the one I throw, uh, or the one I tie to braid the mono or braid the fluorocarbon. So I tie that knot there. I make it about six to eight inches long. And then I tie a simple little loop knot. I do this on all of my topwaters minus a, like a whopper plopper style bait or a prop bait. I tie it directly to, um, now, whopper plopper style baits, I just tie directly to braid. I don't put a leader on there. Prop baits, I put a leader. Uh, all walking baits, I put a leader and popping baits. But I tie a little simple loop knot. This loop knot has never, ever failed me. It has been one of the most consistent uh, knots that I've ever tied. But, you know, I'm going to have some people say, well, man, that little short leader, it'll break. Well, that mono still has stretch. And at six inches long, it's still going to have the stretch you need that you're not gonna pull the hooks out. I actually think it hooks them better. Maybe it's just a mental thing, I don't know, but I know that day in and day out, it works for me. Now, beyond just the bait side of things and how to tie it on, where do you throw it? You know, when you get on a grass lake, let's say for instance, you're on Sam Rayburn right now, and there is hydrilla everywhere. I'm gonna find the back end of drains, I'm gonna find the side of drains, maybe some grass points, I want the flatter the better, but I need a depth change. The depth change is really important this time of year because it allows the fish to slide up and slide back down. You know, I don't want to just go across an, a, massive flat, a massive flat and and just try to catch a bass. I'm going to try to find those edges. Anytime I can find some kind of change is where I want to throw that smaller sexy dog junior. You know, because the deal is, is a lot of times you're going to have guys say, well, I'm just going to go down the bank and fish it. Well, in certain situations, that is going to work. Maybe not in grass situations, though. When you're in grass, you got to find those differences, those little subtle differences. Maybe where the mat goes to more scattered grass. Maybe you got to drop off here or creek channel bends there or the drain runs and snakes through the grass. Those are the kind of places you want to look for. Now... I could sit there and tell you to go to all of those places, but probably one of the most important aspects of that is finding bait fish. You need to find the shad in the grass. This time of year, you're gonna start seeing the shad migrate in and around the grass. This is the perfect time to throw that smaller bait. Yes, you could throw a KVD splash, and this time of year, I have both of them tied on. I have the little small KVD splash, and I have the Sexy Dog Junior. I don't have any big baits this time of year. I don't think the big baits work nearly as well, especially for those high pressured, really hot bass that are sitting up there in that shallow water. The smaller the bait, the better it works. Now, if you're in a lake that doesn't have grass, and I've got just as many guys that don't have grass that do, 
I'm going to turn to more of, uh, you got to really figure out if it's a rock lake, I'm going to try to find a different type of rock. You know, if I'm running the whole lake and I see small, 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 and then I see a section of big chunk rock, I'll pull over and fish that big chunk rock. Or if I'm fishing a lake that has a lot of clay and I see one little section of pea gravel, I'm going to go throw the, the top water around the pea gravel. Now in that situation when you're starting talking about rock, bait is still really important. You need to find shad, but the other big important thing is find shade. Fish shade lines early in the morning, late in the evening. Find those places where uh, the trees are a little bit taller on the side of a point that have that perfect pea gravel bank and go throw the top water down through there because the fish are gonna use the shade to ambush their prey. They might not have a lot of other uh, things to hide behind. So you need to have that shade, you need to have something that they can hide behind. But guys, I hope y'all learned how to, to use that Sexy Dog Junior and hopefully it'll help you catch more bass this year. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll see y'all in the next video.